Before we begin, this is not a beginner's tutorial. I will not be explaining every detail in my code, but rather the Perlin noise related parts. You can find all the source code and a link on noise in general in the description. In the upper right hand corner you can see the finished product of this tutorial. You can use this 3D Perlin noise to produce something like procedural terrain. The view in the corner will stay there the whole tutorial. It will help you understand what I'm doing right now and how 3D Perlin noise works. So this is our main setup. We have a Perlin noise tutorial class in a new c -sharp script, which only has a function that takes a vector 3 point and returns a single float value. Right now you can see that it just returns the x coordinate of the point. We start our Perlin noise generation by using our coordinates x, y and z to pick semi-random values from a permutation array. Here you can see such a permutation array with the numbers from 0 to 255 and in a random order. It is also to mention that this array is copied once and I will later explain to you why that is the case. I also defined a variable that contains the biggest number in the array. We will need this later on. Before we now can pick numbers from this array, we will have to turn our float coordinates into integers. We will do this with the function floor to int, which takes a value with decimal digits and picks the biggest integer right below that value. But that's not the only thing we have to do. We also have to make sure it stays within range of the array. We do this using the binary operator and not the mod operator because the binary operator takes care of negative numbers and the mod operator would need us to take care of that. Now we can pick values from this array. We start with taking the first dimension into account by using the x coordinate, the float x coordinate, as an index. Picking a value that takes the second dimension into account is done by taking the value we picked with the x coordinate and adding the y coordinate on top. This is also the reason why we duplicated the values in our permutation array, because this addition could have exceeded 255. To take the third dimension into account, we repeat the same process with the z-coordinate. Please don't let yourself be confused by those zeros at the end of every variable. They will make sense when you continue with this tutorial. To see what this actually does, we have to change the return value. We will simply return the last value that we picked, which now is a value between 0 and 255. If you want to return a value between 0 and 1, you actually have to multiply this with 1 divided by 255. So now this already looks pretty random. But the cuts in between the points, the change of color, is still too hard and the noise itself is still too random. To fix this we interpolate the point values. Interpolation in this case means looking at the values of neighboring points and picking a value closer to those values. To get those neighboring values we increase each float coordinate by 1 and store the result of that in a new variable. Now we pick values from the permutation array for those neighboring points. This is simple for the first dimension by again just taking the float point x1 value as an index. The values of the four neighboring points of the second dimension can be accessed by using every additive combination of the two float point y coordinates and the two values from the first dimension as indices. This sounds complicated, but if you have used the zeros and ones, it is simply covering every binary combination. For the third dimension, you do the same as for the second dimension, but with the values from the permutation y and the float point z coordinates. This is easy if you follow the binary code and should result in eight values. For what we will return now is an interpolation of those eight values we now picked. This can be done by the lerp function. For those of you who don't know, the lerp function takes three values into account. The two values that should be interpolated and an interpolation value. If we do the math around this, we actually need a lerp function in lerp function in a lerp function because we will have to cover eight values, but we just can interpolate two values per lerp. What we're still missing for this is the interpolation value. As an interpolation value, we will simply use the distance from the first float point to our actual point. We can simply take our actual point and subtract the float point from it, which will get our distance. 
which will always result in a value in between 0 and 1. We will do this three times, each time for every coordinate. Now we just have to fill our loops with values, which can be done by filling in the values just from top down to the bottom. So first permutation set 0, 0, 0 and last permutation set 1, 1, 1. Make sure you use the z distance in the outermost loop and the x distance in the innermost loop. Also don't forget to multiply this by 1 divided by 255 if you want to have values in between 0 and 1. At this point I would also like to introduce a frequency. This frequency is multiplied with the point value at the beginning of the function. This will not only help us play with the values, but it will also help prevent the distances from going to zero. After this step, our values are a lot smoother, as you can see, and we can actually play with them and zoom in and out of the noise. This is actually not Perlin noise right now, but value noise. In this, you can still see these sharp edges and direction changes. Before we make this into Perlin noise, we will do something which is called smoothing. This can be done by putting all the distances into a function which looks something like this. Don't be afraid, this is not a very difficult to grasp function. It's just that its first derivative and its second derivative have zeros at both ends of the function. After smoothing all those distances, we replace them in the loop functions. And as you can see, our result is way smoother, especially if we zoom in a little bit. For everybody that's still watching, bear with me, we will now change this value noise into Perlin noise. Perlin noise basically consists of gradients and the easiest gradients we could return would be one dimensional distance. As you might have guessed, this is not what we want. This is just one dimension, it just contains a single gradient and it also has just one direction it is going. Let's remove the gradient problem first by interpolating between the gradient right now and the gradient that goes into the opposite direction. This pretty evenly gray block does not look at all what we want to have, but it will result in Perlin noise as soon as we reintroduce randomness. We can do this by mixing up the direction in the same way we did pick the values from the permutation array. So we first define an array of directions. These directions are all the directions from the middle of a cube to each the middle of its edges and four vectors that represent the directions of a tetrahedron. We actually use these directions because they introduce randomness but they don't bring in a directional preference. To pick from this directional array we just use the permutated values as indices. To save some storage space we can also write this shorter. Now we combine each of those vectors with the corresponding distance values through a scalar or dot product. This will give us float values, which we then use to interpolate and we're done. You can now see the finished 3D Perlin noise and can use it for whatever you like. I hope you could follow me and learn something in the process. Leave questions and or feedback in the comments if you like. And if you want to see more of those videos, leave a like. See you next time.